Well, hello, all of you beautiful people out there in Minecraft land. How are you today? I am fantastic. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Oh, my name is Vid. Welcome back to another very exciting episode. Hey, look, uh, when you're done end rating, can I talk with you about the roads of the shopping district? Yes. Freeze needs to talk to me about the roads of the shopping district, but she recognizes that I am end rating. <laughs> so yeah, in case you didn't realize what I was doing either, I'm end rating. Yeah, I need some more uh, shulker boxes. So that's basically what I'm after. I'm just gonna, you know, go but to a bunch of cities and, and kill some shulkers. Um, yeah, so far, I only have three shulker shells. That's because all of the end cities that I've come across have already been completely raided and I've only managed to find three uh, alive shulkers. But I'm about to head into territory that is undiscovered. So hopefully I'll be able to find even more shulkers. I want to do something kind of fun today. I want to play a little game. I want to test your knowledge of Minecraft because I'm going to build a thing today. I am going to build a project, something that I've been wanting to build for a little while and I haven't mentioned it to you. But if you know me, you might already know what that thing is. If you don't know me, or if you, you know, if you could think of about 10 things that I want to build, which uh, it wouldn't really surprise me. Um, well, I'm going to give you some hints today. I am going to go through all of the resource collection while I set up to build this project, and then I'm going to build it at the end of the episode. At least I hope I'm going to build it at the end of the episode. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint. Number one hint is that uh, this end raid is not really a part of it. I mean, I need shulker boxes and just to store resources. I'm going to collect a bunch of resources today and I think the easiest way to do that is by doing it with shulker boxes. So I thought I would take this opportunity to collect a few shulker shells so I could make some shulker boxes, but not really part of the project that I'm going to be working on today. So that's your first hint. But as soon as the end raid is over, then the uh, the real project begins. So pay close attention and see if you can guess in the comments below what I am going to be building today. No cheating. Don't look at the end of the episode. I'm looking at you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Write down the end of the episode or write down in the comments what you think I'm going to build at the end of the episode. Hey, look, I found myself an end city and it even has a boat. And I am pretty sure this one has not actually been raided at all. Like a professional, let's take out the uh, the shulker here. Boom, done. Nothing to worry about. Got myself a shulker shell, and of course, got myself a spare elytra. Plus, let's see what's in the chest here. Oh, some gold ingots, like those. Uh, I'm gonna leave the iron tools, even though they have some uh, some decent chance on them. Look at this, efficiency five and mending on an iron shovel. That's pretty cool. Fortune 2, Efficiency 3, Mending. That's a pretty good backup pick. I like it. What about this side? Yeah, Unbreaking 3, Aqua Affinity. I'll take it. Uh, Curse of Vanishing. Not interested. Curse of Vanishing, not interested. Uh, but I will take the gold. And I'm happy. Of course, being the professional Minecrafter that I am, I did bring some chests with me, as well as a crafting table. I always keep some crafting tables in my ender chest, and yes, of course, I brought an ender chest with me as well. Then I can actually make shulker boxes on the fly. So one, two shulker boxes. Let's just drop those right here. And now I can start to actually put some of the end items uh, and end loot right in here. Those are my actual boots. Uh, I don't want to get those confused with the other end gear that I'm picking up. So let's just put that sort of stuff in there. And now we're ready to keep raiding. Let's take care of this guy on the outside here. Good. Got the shells. Oh, and now that we've cleared out the boat, let's just go right in the front door and take out some of the shulkers that are inside the building. And into the top of the tower we go, and there's always bunches of these guys up here. So we just gotta try not to get hit by the projectiles, but of course we know we're going to be. So you just kind of hit these guys as, as many times as you can while you're getting hammered with projectiles. And you try not to hit them when they're closed, because if you hit them when they're closed, they have a much higher a likelihood of teleporting away. There we go. If in doubt, you can always hit these guys in the face with an arrow as well. That works. Oh, 
And let's take a quick break from killing shulkers to check out what's in the chest here. Smite 5, knockback 2, mending fire protection? Ah, uh, you know what, I, sure, I'll take the gear. And over here, we got some gold and some iron, and I'm leaving an iron pick. Shulkers are basically my least favorite thing in the entire world to, uh, to fight. I do not like end raiding. I'm only here to collect a few shulker boxes, and let's see what I got. Oops. Uh, let's try that again. There we go. Here's my shulker box. I, aside from this shulker box that you're looking at and one extra I got, I also got 28 more shells, which is enough for another 14 shulker boxes plus, you know, a little bit of end gear that I got. Got myself an extra set of elytra, which is nice. Uh, another brewing stand and some potions. So overall, pretty successful considering I've only been doing this for about a half an hour. Okay, I couldn't help myself. I stayed in the end a little bit longer and I found myself another ender chest and... Ooh, diamonds. I love getting some diamonds and also some more uh, iron ingots and some diamond horse armor. That's pretty cool. Uh, again, I'm going to leave the iron tools behind. If anybody comes back, they can find those iron tools and have something uh, exciting. And I think I am done end raiding. So just to prove I am not a uh, bad Minecraft player. Boom. See? I can actually make it right into those things on the first uh, attempt. And home sweet home. Let's take a quick look in our ender chest and see what our final tally was. I think this is my, my ender chest box right here. Uh, so this doesn't actually count the second ender chest that I, or I keep saying ender chest, it's shulker box. That's what this is. This is called a shulker box. This doesn't count the second shulker box. So uh, this one right here, I actually picked up as well because I made two in the end plus this one. Plus I ended up with another 46 shells. So that's enough for 23 more boxes, uh, plus a dragon head and uh, diamonds and some gear and an extra elytra, of course. So I think I did pretty good. And now that I have my shulker boxes collected from the end, I am now in a much better place to uh, take on step two of my multi-step plan for today. And that is obviously coming to the nether and uh, doing a little bit of digging. Specifically, I want to come right down here to near the lava level here, and I'm just going to start digging through some of this because I am looking for something very particular, and no, it is not that. It is... It is this right here! Magma blocks. I need to collect a lot of magma blocks. So I'm going to spend a few minutes in the nether. And by the way, you can see that I can walk on this stuff without it uh, causing me any damage. And that is because I am wearing my gold boots that also have uh, Frostwalker on them. See, this is this is Vid's tip of the day right here. Get yourself some gold boots that have Frostwalker on them, and those are your nether travel boots. See, when you come into the nether, you should always have some item that has uh, that's gold so that you don't get attacked by piglins, and also Frostwalker so that you can walk across magma blocks without uh, any worry whatsoever. You don't have to shift or sneak or anything like that. You can just walk across this stuff, and it's all good. And they don't take any damage from walking across this stuff, so you should be pretty good. This stuff is so super duper satisfying to collect. All you gotta do is get yourself a pickaxe with efficiency five on it, and you just go crazy. In fact, I don't even think you need efficiency five. Efficiency four should be able to do exactly the same thing, at least from what I have read. I just happen to have efficiency five on my pickaxe, so I am going to use that. This stuff is so plentiful everywhere you look. Uh, I am basically going to stop collecting this stuff because I have enough. In fact, right down here, where I've just been kind of gathering my resources here, I have one full shulker box, two full shulker boxes, uh, and then several more stacks of magma blocks, plus a whole bunch of other uh, goodies that I've collected from the nether in my travels. Uh, including this stuff right here, which I can just throw over there. Let's pack up all of this stuff and head back to the overworld where we can do the next thing. Lucky for me, the portals back to the overworld are very convenient to actually find. You just kind of have to head back to the zero zero type area, which is uh, I think right around uh, that portal right there. <laughs> And from there, all of these other portals will go in various different directions. And this uh, piglin just decided he wanted to go back to the shopping district. And if I follow him through, you should see on this side that uh, 
did he despawn? Yeah, he might have despawned. And then we just have to head back to our trading hall here because, in case you don't know, this is by far the best way to get XP and to repair your tools. Check this out. My uh, Silk Touch pick down to uh, 564 durability, but I'm just going to do like one round of trading. So uh, potatoes, carrots, and melons, and it's already at 956. So I've gone up almost a third of the durability. If I go to the next guy, potatoes, carrots, melons. Now I am at 1342. If I go to the next guy, uh, this guy will do it for sure. Potatoes and carrots. There, see? Pick's totally repaired. Let me swap out my axe here. Let's do the uh, pumpkins. Now that's repaired. Let's do the shovel. Melons. Now that's repaired. I can't repair my bow, but as a byproduct, all of my armor and my elytra are also completely repaired. This is why I've been saying that villagers are the way to go in Minecraft. The next part of this project involves these shears that I just made by sheer coincidence and also something over here at Dano's base. Uh, have you figured it out yet? Well, let me go into the water and uh, collect the next thing that I need. And that should be this stuff right here. I'm gonna need a bunch of it. So while I'm down here, just grab that, that, and ooh, some more over here. Doo -doo -doo. The only problem with collecting this stuff is that it does float all the way up to the surface. So you kind of gotta grab a bunch of it and then, uh, and then swim up to the surface and grab what you need. That should be plenty of seagrass. And now I need to take that seagrass up here because there are some friends that I need to see right here. Let's give you some seagrass and you some seagrass and you guys can uh, make it the baby. Yes, yes, thank you. Oh, look, and there's another couple over here. So how about you have some seagrass and you have some seagrass. And there we go. This is exactly what I wanted. So let's one, two, three. You get a lot of these for a little effort. Four, five, six. And these guys are already laying more over here. Man, oh man, turtles lay a lot of eggs. About 30 seconds later, I've got another. Let's see. One, two, three. Oh, I'm losing them in the water. Four, five, six, seven. 23 turtle eggs. That's just from breeding like these two turtles and there was actually two more turtles. You can see one there and one over there. They were just ha kind of hanging around. I gave them some seagrass. This has been like 30 seconds, I feel like, and I've already got like so many turtle eggs. So here I am back in the end one more time because I have to mine a bunch of obsidian. Now, this is not directly related to the project that I'm going to be building today. This is just a... Uh, a means to an end. This is how I am going to get back and forth uh, between the project I'm building. So I'm just going to mine some of this down so I can build some nether portals. We are getting so close to being ready to uh, complete this project. So just wanted to show you, drop a shulker box down because I have in here a little bit of glass that I gathered by uh, trading with some villagers, some of the spillover of my magma blocks. I also have two full shulker boxes full of magma blocks. I crafted some spruce trap doors, four stacks to be exact, plus a stack of chests and a stack of hoppers, grabbed a bunch of turtle eggs, as you can imagine, and of course just got back from the end where I harvested some obsidian, and now, last but not least, I just need a few stacks of sand for one more thing. All right, I have gathered four full stacks of sand, and now I just need to go into one of these boxes right here. I think uh, this one, because this one has, yep, gunpowder. One, two, three, four, five gunpowder. Got to get out one of these guys as well. Uh, put that into my hotbar and start crafting. Do you know what I'm crafting? It's TNT. I now have a full stack of TNT and... That should be everything I need. Now, we just need to get to the place where we're going to build. Did I say what? I mean, where? Where we are going to build. Have you figured it out yet? Do you know, the Magma Blocks was a huge giveaway. I figured uh, most of you would have got it right from Magma Blocks, but uh, there's a few things that require Magma Blocks in this game, so maybe not. Okay, let's, uh, let's go where we need to build. 
And probably no big surprise, but the project starts in the nether. That's right. We are over here at this portal, which I believe goes back to the shopping district. Uh, at least I hope it goes back to the shopping district. And we are going to build a staircase right here that leads all the way up into the bedrock ceiling. now have a staircase that goes all the way up from our uh, spawn portal all the way up to what is bedrock at layer 127 in the nether. As you can see, I ran out of stairs just a, a few blocks short. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking I only needed 64 stacks, but I forgot uh, the lava lake is actually a little bit lower than 64, so I needed more than that. But anyway, here we are at bedrock, and uh, we're at risk of banging our heads on the bedrock. But that's okay, because this uh, area right here is only a means to an end. What we are really after is this area right up here, and um, I had to look around a little bit for it, and I wish I had looked around a little bit for it before I had actually made the staircase, otherwise I would have shifted it over about three blocks, because uh, it's actually over here and right up in here. There you go. You see these two blocks right here? Let me just get my little display up here. You can actually see that uh, looking at block, minus four, 127, 87, and minus three, 127, 87. But the important thing is, not only are these blocks side by side, but they are also at 127, which means these are the highest blocks that can possibly spawn on the nether, or in the nether. Um, right above this is the nether roof, so I need to get myself above those blocks. And the way I'm going to do that is by pillaring up a little bit until I'm right in this area right here. I'm going to put down a slab, and now you can see there's only a half uh, of a block gap right in there. And hopefully, if all goes according to plan, I don't actually die when I do this. So I'm going to throw an ender pearl right in there. In fact, I might jump and throw an ender pearl in there just to do it. So here goes nothing. Three, two, one, jump an ender pearl. And ah, uh, okay. Well, that didn't work. Maybe you can't jump. There, just ender pearl. Yeah, and now I am on the roof of the nether. And that is up and up, and there we go. And this block right here, this minus four, 127, 87, is actually the block that I am going to be breaking out. At least I hope I'm gonna be breaking out this block. Otherwise, I may have no way of getting back home again. All right, I've got my little goodie boxes set up over here, and I've grabbed some things in my inventory. This is the way this is going to go. By the way, I've also mapped my keys uh, so that I can't right click on anything anymore. Now I have to push the Y key in order to place an item. So I'm going to place a sticky, not a sticky piston, a regular piston right here. Jump up and place it facing up. Beside that, I am going to break this block and put in some obsidian right there. And of course, I'm trying to right click because I still haven't, uh, haven't actually mastered this yet. So... Let me just uh, break these blocks around here because I need to have maximum room here on top of this block. Let's put a block like that up here. We're going to put a lever right there. Uh, nope, that's not the right command. That is the right command. There we go. And in order to push that lever, we have to push the Y key as well. So we're good to go. Now we need a trap door right here. Y, and then we need to push Y. We need to push Y, and now we need to get under here. So the whole idea is we're going to flip this lever, then we're going to move over, and we're going to place a piston facing down right here on this spot. I guess I need another piston in my inventory, right? <laughs> that would actually help. Uh, otherwise, this isn't going to work. Luckily for me, I did bring a few pistons with me, so let's get one of those. Um, but not by itself. I need to do this in the most dangerous way possible. And so 
I need to actually get some TNT as well. So I need two pieces of TNT. Have to make sure that this uh, lever is in the right position because if I have this lever in the wrong position when I place the TNT down, well, that's no good. That's no bueno. That's going to uh, blow up before I'm ready. This is, by the way, the easiest way that I've found to break bedrock because you don't have to like do anything super crazy. You just basically get yourself up against this trapdoor. You push your button. By the way, because I've mapped Y to my uh, my keys, I can just hold down the Y key and that will automatically spam the button. I don't have to like get an auto clicker or anything. So watch this. Y, then I move over to about here and boom. And that, you know, doesn't even hurt. I mean, I have good armor on, but uh, let's see what actually happens here. Look at that! Look at that! I've already broken the bedrock! One try, one and done. I am a pro. And now there is just one minor problem. Uh, Mr. One and Done Pro uh, broke the wrong bedrock. Yeah, you can actually see that there's another piece of bedrock down there, uh, so I can't actually get down. The one I needed to break was this one, which has no bedrock under it, so I guess I have to do that again after all. But just to prove how easy this is, I'm going to do it all in one continuous shot. I'm going to go back to my controls, keybinds. I'm going to set my keybind to Y again. Perfect. Now I have to push Y in order to place items. So make sure I'm in the right place this time. Jump, push Y. There we go. To place a piston right there. Now the obsidian goes down. Just need one piece of obsidian right there. That's a Q. I didn't want to push Q. I wanted to push Y. So now I can't even get my keys in place. There we go. Okay. Uh, y. That places it down. Then we go here and we go Y. And then we go here and we go Y. Why do I keep pushing T? Y. It's right there. And then I need my trapdoor right there. Push Y. And then this is how I get under the trapdoor. Just like this. And then I can reach up, hit that, and come over here and hit that. Perfect. So let's uh, get the TNT out. So one, two pieces of TNT. Make sure our lever's in the right place, which it is. Otherwise, there'd be red particles there. So one piece of TNT there. One piece of TNT there. Let's, uh, oops. Let's get that down. Okay, I am underneath. Now, here we go. So it's going to be Y to flick the lever and then over here and Y right there. Make sure I have pistons in my hand. I've done this before without pistons and that's just stupid. Um, y. And then you come over here and you go Y. And boom. And the piston is facing up. And when the piston is facing up, it means you've probably done it. Yep, there it is. Broken the bedrock. And I can now break that obsidian because I don't need it and my glass went away too. That's okay. I now have a perfect way down. Hey, you got you got an achievement, right? I did, yes. I got a hot tourist destinations um, quite recently. Wow. Oops. Yes, it's uh yeah, I, right here. I, I just wanted to come say in person. Um Boo! Oh, oh. All right. All right, so that behind me is where the hole has been punched in the bedrock, but I am running my way all the way over to a new place to build my project for the day. Have you figured it out yet? Leave it in the comments below if you have. If you haven't, I'm sorry, time is up. I'm about to reveal exactly what I am going to be building. So, it's gonna be a gold farm. That's right, I'm making a gold farm on the roof of the nether. Of course, what else would I be possibly making? Uh, it's gonna go way up there in the sky. I've already got my resources all laid out here, and in case you were wondering why I've set it up like this, I have my shulker boxes attached to that back glass there so that I can still open them from the side, but I have glass over top of it so that nothing spawns on top of them because uh, I don't want anything spawning up here while I'm building. Anyway, without further ado, let's hit that time-lapse mode.
end of time lapse. And here I am on top of my newly constructed gold farm. This, of course, is the same gold farm that I built in my single player world. This is based on a design by none other than Logical Geek Boy. You know, we love him on this channel. Uh, link to his farm originally in the uh, description down below. I've changed up the, the design of the glass on the top to stop magma cubes from spawning and added a few other improvements that were mentioned in the comments of his video. So you should definitely check that out as well. Let's check out how this farm is performing. So I should mention uh, what I've done at the bottom here. His uh, farm just has a basic uh, setup going into a bunch of chests and I have added a little bit extra and of course I need to stop this from making noise because it's just gonna drive me crazy if I don't. Uh, so what I have here is a, uh, an, a set of auto sorters. So uh, I'm not filtering like every single item that could possibly come out of here. What I'm mainly fil filtering out is the rotten flesh because this farm does produce a lot of rotten flesh and so I just wanna pull that out and feed it straight into this guy right here, which is a dropper. And I've just got, uh, as you saw, just a couple observers facing each other, which are just constantly tick, tick, ticking and spitting that rotten flesh down into this lava right here to delete it. But what I'm left with are uh, these chests. And so this will be the first one that gets filled. And well, yeah, you can see I've got quite a few gold nuggets in there. Plus this one, plus this one, uh, this one, and this one. Yeah, so that's five double chests, but I've also got these on the other side. One, two, three. Okay, so this one doesn't fill up as fast, but uh, so two double chests and a little bit of extra. And this will translate into gold, and that represents uh, about one overnight sessions of probably 10 hours-ish. But I've done that for a couple days now, actually. So uh, up here, yeah, you can see I'm already collecting quite a bit of gold, which is nice. I get uh, probably for every night that I'm AFK, I get, I'm going to say something around five or six stacks of blocks of gold once I convert all the ingots down. So yeah, that's nice. This farm is also very loud if you're on the ground, which is why you want to stay way up above the farm. And that, my friends, is where we are going to end this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, experiment where I kind of tested your Minecraft knowledge to see if you could identify what I was building based on the resources I was collecting. If you liked that, if you like that format, let me know in the comments below. Leave me a comment. If you didn't like that, also leave it in the comments below. You can also click that like button, you know, that thing down there. Uh, and if you want to see more fantastic farms like this, feel free to subscribe to this channel as well while you're down there. Um, there were a couple cameos in this episode from a few of my other server mates. I am playing on a server with lots of other people, so check out their links in the description down below as well. And think that's pretty much all I need to say for my outro, right? Yeah, so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next episode!